You may have heard of the term low content books, and you may have heard of Amazon KDP. And if you're wondering what this is all about and how you can create books that are low content, relatively easy to make and make actual money doing it, then this is the video for you. This is a tutorial designed for complete beginners. So if you're not familiar with this, this is the place you wanna be. Now in this video, I'm gonna be talking about a software solution called BookBolt as well. And I'm a huge fan of this. I'm gonna put a link to BookBolt in the video description down below. Just a heads up, it is an affiliate link. That just means if you purchase BookBolt, I would receive a small commission. I use BookBolt to create low content books and I absolutely love it. So I'm gonna be talking about that in this video and providing a walkthrough as well. Let's jump into Amazon KDP in general. Why should you sell low content books on Amazon KDP? Well, there's a number of reasons. First of all, Amazon KDP is completely free to list. When people go onto Amazon and they buy a book, they could be buying a book designed by you or me, and they, we've published it through Amazon KDP. It's a great solution. It's also risk-free as well. There's no listing fee. It doesn't cost you anything to upload a book onto Amazon KDP. There's nothing technically stopping you from uploading 100 books a thousand books. It's just your time and your energy and your creativity. And if you can get those things working for you, then Amazon KDP can be a great solution for a side hustle income. It's also relatively simple. In this video, I'll be walking through how to create a low content book. I'm gonna be using BookBolt software. I find BookBolt intuitive and I find it really fun to design rather than worrying about the technical aptitude of things. And I think the biggest strength about Amazon KDP is that you're selling on Amazon. Amazon is one of the biggest websites in the world. It's like getting rent-free property right in Times Square. You've got a ton of customers coming through Amazon. They're looking for things. If you're gonna sell, selling on Amazon is the place to be. So you may be asking yourself, fine, I can sell on Amazon, but what is a low content book? So I've got some examples of what low content books are. Here's an example of a journal that sells on Amazon. So moms and dads go onto Amazon, they buy this journal called My Emotions Journal. It's for kids. It sells for like five to 10 US dollars. That's typically the price point. Here's another example. Here's a coloring book, and it's an adult coloring book for stress relief, and this is a pretty popular product. As you can see with these low content books, there's not a lot of words inside the book. They're low content in that regard. Here's another one that's a calendar. This is a 2023-2024 pocket calendar, and it's just got a floral cover and blank pages inside. There's just lined pages that people then would journal. There could be dates inside. There could be some pictures inside, but there's not thousands of words the way a typical novel or a nonfiction book is. Here's an activity book for clever kids, 150 illustrated mazes, word searches, and color by numbers. So the nice thing about these low content books is they're low cost, you know, they're between five and $10. You might see a couple for 12, but they're not super expensive. You've got a great cover, and then the kids or the adults are filling in items inside of the book. It's low content. Here's another one, a sketchbook. This is really popular. It's a notebook for drawing, writing, and painting. And really it's just a cover with an empty book inside. There could be blank pages, grid paper pages. It's a relatively easy book to make. So what makes up a book? There's really two elements when you're making a low content book. The first one is a PDF, and that PDF file is the interior of the book. That's page one, page two, page three, all the way up to page 120, whatever, however big your book is. The second piece of it is the actual cover template. So we can see here we've got a template where the right side of it is the front page, and the back side of it is the back page. You get those two things, you upload them onto Amazon KDP, which is completely free to set up an account on Amazon KDP, and then you can enter some keywords, and then you basically publish your book. So I'm gonna be doing a walkthrough now of BookBolt, which is my preferred solution for creating low content books. This thing is awesome, let's jump in. Okay, so when you sign up on BookBolt, you have a trial period, but when you get an account with BookBolt, you're gonna to get to a screen that looks like this. You've got along the left-hand side some menu items. There's tutorials you can take. You can see here there's a number of tutorials. There's also a products button, so I'm gonna click on the products button, and I can type in different keywords. So for example, I'm gonna type in travel journal Europe, and that's gonna get me a bunch of results. And you can see the bestseller rating that translates into the number of estimated sales per month. And then it shows you over on the right-hand side, 
keyword searches. So you can do some market research here very, very easily. Now, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time in this. I'm actually gonna flip over into the second piece of BookBolt. So right at the top under research, I'm gonna to go to create, and that's gonna take me to the BookBolt Studio. So I'm gonna click on this BookBolt Studio. Okay, and when you log into BookBolt Studio, you're gonna be asked to create a new project. And so here, I'm gonna go into cover and interior. You can do a hardcover book, a paperback book. I'm gonna do a paperback cover and interior. I'm gonna type in for my project name. I'm gonna type in travel journal Europe. And then my trim size, I'm gonna leave it at six by nine, but there's all these different options here. And then there's also black and white interior with cream paper, white paper, and so on. And then my page count, I'm gonna make this a 120 page book. So I can just do the up arrow or I can also type in 120 pages and then there's a bleed or no bleed option. I'm gonna create project. Okay, and from here, I get on the left hand side a bunch of thumbnails. The first thumbnail is my cover. And so my cover here is basically my front page is on the right, my back page is on the left. And then I get page one, page two, and so on. And you'll notice all the pages are blank. So you might think, wow, this is gonna take a lot of work because I need to fill 120 pages. Oh my goodness. Plus I need to design the cover. Well, we're gonna do this in just minutes. So what I'm gonna do first is fill in the interior of the book. I'm gonna click this little maze icon right here, which is called page templates. And then from here, I can select a template, a blank template. So for example, there's blank and ruled paper down on the right. There's dot graph paper, graph paper. I'm just gonna select this ruled variants. I'm gonna select three variants. You can see there's narrow, college, and wide. I'm gonna select wide. And then from here, I'm gonna select all. So all of my pages will now be filled in with that template, and I'm just gonna unselect the cover. So every page now, except the cover, will have that ruled page in there. I'm gonna select next, and I'm just gonna select submit. And we'll see now, Every page along the left-hand side, you'll notice, is the exact same. It's just a blank page. I can scroll all the way down to the end, page 102, for example, and even page 102 has got ruled lines on there. Every page is the exact same. So that's the low content aspect of it. Now we're gonna design the cover. So I've got a cover template here, and I'm going to select a paper color to start. So over here on the top left, I'm gonna pick paper color, and I'm gonna pick black. That's one of the defaults. Now, it's not going to show up because I've got the template sitting on top of the actual cover. So this cover template, I can change this template opacity, and I can make it down to zero, or I can make it 50, whatever I want. I'm going to leave it like that so we can still see it a tiny bit. It gives me an idea of where to put my different graphics and my text. I'm now going to click on the text button, which is on the left-hand side, and I'm going to just select heading, and that gives me this box that I can now put something in. So I'm going to just double click inside of it and I'm going to type in travel log and then I'm just going to move this now up here and you can see there's guidelines that come in which is really nice. This would be like perfectly centered for example right there. I can just move it up. I can see the vertical guideline is showing me that this is now centered and then I'm going to select heading one more time. I'm going to double click it and I'm going to type in the word Europe and I'm going to move that. Maybe I changed my mind and I want to have Europe first and then travel log underneath it. Now this is black text, so if I were to have a black cover, I wouldn't see it, so I'm gonna to need to change that. So I'm gonna select Europe, and I'm going to change the text color so that it's white. Same thing with the travel log. Okay, so next up, I'm now gonna select some photos. I actually just came back from Europe on a vacation, so I've got my own photos that I could upload. So I'm gonna go over here to the Photos button, and under File Library, I'm gonna click on that, and I'm gonna click Upload Image, and I can select that now from my computer. Okay, so I've selected a couple photos from my personal library. I'm gonna select this one over here on the right. This is the Amalfi Coast. I just was just there a couple weeks ago. And so I'm gonna use that as my cover page, my cover picture here. So I'm gonna put this right in the middle. I can always change the cover template down to zero. Now you can also upload other photos as well into your book using Pixabay or Unsplash. So I'm gonna click on the pictures button and you can see here under uploads, I've got a picture that I took from Italy, but I can also go to Pixabay and I could type in, for example, Europe and see what comes up. And here I get a whole bunch of commercially licensed photos that I can use. Here's one from Greece, for example. I can select that, and I can put that now over on my back cover. I can then select the file library. I can go to Unsplash, which is another website that offers commercially licensed products. And I'll type in Europe, and we'll see what else pops up. So here, for example, is the Eiffel Tower. I'm gonna select that. 
I can put that down at the bottom. I'm going to go back into Pixabay and I'm going to type in something specific here. I'll type in England and I'll get this nice picture here of a London landmark. And then I can shrink them down. I can move them around. So I'm going to put a nice little window of pictures right here in the middle of the book. Okay, and just like that, I've got some pictures now on the back cover of my European travel log. And it took me literally a couple minutes and I just grabbed these professional photos. I'm proud that I used one of my own photos here in the front. I'm gonna make this a tiny bit bigger. I can move this around. Okay, and I really like the way that looks. I could also go into one of the internal pages as well and add graphics to that. So here I've clicked on page one and then it's just a blank page here with some rules. And I could go in here to the file library and I could pick an image off of Pixabay, for example. I could type in the word Rome, and I could find a picture here to add in. So, for example, I'm going to pick this one of the Roman Colosseum, and now we'll see that the Roman Colosseum picture adds in. I could shrink it, I can move it around, and this is a really neat feature as well. There's effects over here as well. So I could make it black and white, grayscale, for example. I'll just click OK. I can also adjust the image, brightness, contrast. We could also change the opacity of this image as well. I've made it a bit bigger here so we can see it, but let's say we wanted to make it a background image. Well, I can click on right here. This is the opacity, and I could change the opacity down to say 30% or 20%, whatever I want, and now it just sits in the background. You could still write your journal over top of it. You could fill your hundred and some odd pages with great looking graphics as well and make your book even more unique unique, add even more value for your clients. So from here, I can make sure my product is saved. So I've saved it. I've also got the auto feature turned on. Okay, so now I want to make sure that this book becomes a PDF. So I'm going to go up to project on the top left, and I'm going to download this project. Now I have two options, and I would just suggest that you try either one and see which one looks better. It's personal preference. And I'm going to click this. It now is going to put me in a queue to download this PDF. Now it looks like a lot in queue, but it's only gonna take maybe a couple minutes, grab a quick coffee, and it will download and create my PDF file. Okay, so about a minute later, it's now given me an option to save my zip file, which is what I'll do now to my computer. I'll save my zip file. So the zip file is basically two files. One is the interior, which is just a PDF, 120 pages of blank pages. And then the cover is another PDF file, and that is my travel log, cover that's completely designed around the template. Now I'm going to upload this to Amazon KDP. So Amazon KDP is a completely free website. You can upload onto Amazon. You just need to create a free account. And here at the top, I'm going to click on create to create a new book. It's going to ask me if I want to create an ebook, a paperback, or a hardcover. I want to create a paperback. And then from here, I really just have to fill in the keywords. Europe Travel Journal, and I've got a little subtitle in there. I can actually push this down. I can copy this and move it down into the subtitle as well. And then if it's part of a series, I would add it's not part of a series. Edition number, I'm not going to add anything. For my author, I'm going to put in my name here. And then contributors, no contributors, and then description. This is where you would take a look at other best-selling books, and then you would add in something. So I'm just going to type in something here. Okay, so I've added in some keywords, which is a summary of my book. And you could do a whole lot more than what I've done. I've just put in a couple lines there. Publishing rights, I'm gonna, I own the copyrights. And now keywords, I'm going to pick seven keywords. And then I can also pick some categories here as well. And it's a low content book, so I'm going to check that box off for low content book. And I'm going to choose my categories now. And one of the things that's nice inside of BookBolt is over on the left-hand side, there's actually a KDP categories option. So when I click on that, it brings me to this page. And I can type in Europe Travel Journal. And we can see what comes up here. So nonfiction travel, Europe general, nonfiction travel, Europe western. So I'm going to pick that, Europe. And then I'm going to pick a couple off of this, general. And I'll pick western, for example, and click save. So that's really helpful. And then adult content, no, there's no adult content in there. I'll save and continue. I'm going to publish without an ISBN. The publication date will just be today. Black and white interior with white paper, nice and easy. Six by nine, no bleed matte and now I'm going to upload my paperback manuscript which is my PDF file. So here's my cover and here's my interior. I'm going to select the interior and now it's going to upload. And just like that my manuscript's now uploaded. My book cover, I'm going to upload this as well. I'm going to upload a cover I already have which is a PDF print. I'm going to upload my cover file. So from here I'm going to pick my cover journal and that's going to upload.
Now it takes a second or two, but you can see now under the manuscript it's popped up and it's processing, and then under the book cover it's also processing as well. I can also go down here to the book preview and I can launch the previewer if you want. So I'm going to click that button. And this is nice because it gives me an idea of what the book's going to look like. There's my front page, my back page, and then I can simply click through and I can see it's just a blank book. It's a journal, which is great. So I can click approve here. I'm happy with the way this looks. And then this is really nice. It gives you a printing cost summary and it's translated into different currencies. So now I'm going to go to my pricing and you can see the price to print this is actually pretty low, $2.29 US. I'm going to go to save and continue and I'm going to set my pricing. Okay, so I've got my territory set to all territories. My primary marketplace is Amazon. And then here I can just type in what I'd like it to be. So my minimum needs to be $3.82. So I'm going to type in $5 for example. And that's going to check out my royalty is 71 cents per copy. You could change it to $6, $10, whatever you want. You can be as competitive with your pricing as you like. It also translates it down here and converts it into different currencies, which is great. From here, I'm just going to click publish your paperback book. And here we go. It's up on Amazon getting reviewed. And it says if it passes our review, it can take 72 hours. But there it is, $5, Europe Travelogue, great price point. And I'm not going to create an ebook. I want to make sure this is a paperback that people are purchasing. And that's it. So I'm going to click close. And now it's in review. Now, once it gets published, I could change things inside. I could change the pricing. I could change the interior if I wanted. I could put it to different markets as well. I only selected the US market in this case, but I could change it and expand it out. There you go. This is nice and easy. And I want to say BookBolt is a fantastic option. BookBolt's got so many different tools inside of it. It's got tutorials, really cool options. And in this tutorial, we checked out the actual BookBolt Studio. And I can't say enough great things about how easy it was to create this book. So big thanks to BookBolt. I absolutely love them and I'm a happy affiliate with them. Check out the link in the video description below. Hope you found this video helpful and make sure to check out my channel for more print on demand goodness. Thanks a lot for watching.